is my waiting for live dance. <laughs> there you go. You have a dance for everything. <laughs> Are we live yet? super excited because I'm going to be demoing something that is very near and dear to my heart. It is the chocolate sugar skull mold. This is something that I use for all of my bust cakes, like this lovely Egyptian goddess right here. This is one of the, the latest tutorials from the Sugar Geek show. So she's actually cake inside and she has a chocolate skull. And so do I, which is how I thought of this. <laughs> and um, a lot of people, like, even though I put a handout when I send out the chocolate skull, when you order it from sugargeekshop.com, people still want to see, like, how do you actually use it. So I'm going to demo the whole spiel. I'm um, going to show you exactly how I put together the chocolate skull, all the steps I take before I carve the cake, and then I'm going to carve what? cake into a bust. But in, and just so you know, a bust just means a body from here to here. It doesn't mean bust. <laughs> okay, so Michelle is here with me so she can answer any of the questions you might have. Just type them out. Um, I'll try and, uh, you know, explain as much stuff as I can, but I always leave stuff out that I think people don't even need to know. So just feel free to ask questions as we go. And, uh, yeah, I'm ready to get started. Woohoo! <laughs> Okie dokie. So, the first thing I'm going to do is actually pour the skull mold. And I have this extremely expensive, super fancy skull mold holder, also known as a pencil box from the dollar store. <laughs> and uh, I just use this be to, to actually hold the skull mold. And I actually just happen to have this. I use this for my cake classes to put all their tools in and it just holds it perfectly. So um, yeah, so buy yourself a dollar skull mold <laughs> holder. And um, I have melted down way more than ch chocolate than I need, but you need four pounds of chocolate for the actual skull mold. I keep looking at Michelle like I'm teaching her. I'm like, are you paying attention? <laughs> so uh, you definitely want to use candy melts or um, these are actually guitar vanilla appeals, which is like a high quality candy melt. But what it means is that you don't have to temper your chocolate. And most people including myself who even knows how to temper chocolate ain't got no time to temper chocolate like it's a pain in the butt so if you put just melt down chocolate chips or something into this mold it will stick like crazy so you definitely want to use fake cheap chocolate because first of all we're it's highly doubtful anybody's actually going to eat this so save yourself some money by using the cheap stuff as well and to answer the question, yes, we do have the chocolate school molds in stock right now. Yes, we do. We just relisted them, so they're ready to go. You can buy just the mold by itself, or you can buy it as a set with the um, eye molds and the transfer sheets if you want to like actually make the full face and everything. But some people want to do the eyes like out of fondant and hand paint them, and that's totally okay too. All right, so first thing I do is I pour some chocolate into said molds and I don't fill the back side up all the way and I pour all the way onto this side you see how thick that is <laughs> I have one question sure it says I live in a very humid country which chocolate is best to use in order for the school to keep its shape this is just chocolate, so it doesn't matter how humid your environment is, it's going to be solid at room temperature. Um, you might be thinking of modeling chocolate, which is, uh, you know, can get softer in warm areas, and I would recommend using hot hands modeling chocolate. Okie dokie. So, normally what I would do now is I would put this in the freezer for like five minutes to let this kind of uh, get like a surface set to it. And then I would pour a little bit more chocolate. So let's pretend like this is set for like five minutes, right? So then I'm going to pour more chocolate and this is gonna be glue to glue the two halves together, mm. right? But it's not set. So <laughs> what's gonna happen is it's gonna get a little bit messy and it's fine. It doesn't, you don't, I mean, chocolate is, you, anything that spills, you can just put back into the bowl, right? But we're gonna be real quick and see if we can. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle's looking at me 
like, oh my god, girl. Ah! <laughs> Yay, that was awesome. <laughs> All right, so this actually snaps together and seals all the way around. So that's actually the best I probably have ever done. <laughs> so now I'm going to place this into the freezer for like an hour or so. But by the magic of no. Facebook Live, <laughs> I have one finished already. So let me go grab it. I'm pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> I am too, to be honest. I thought it was going to go all over the place. <laughs> so if you're a badass like me, you can literally just do that. <laughs> so um, once it freezes, you can actually see that the chocolate will like shrink down and it pulls away from the outside of the, the mold. And we'll just, it should be, <laughs> see, this is what happens when you do live. <laughs> it should be so easy to pull out, except for that it didn't. That's what happened with the two, um, the two pieces glued together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I probably just waited a little bit too long, but we'll just do it live. So now you know what you could do in case that happens to you. There so you actually, she did that on purpose, right? I just wanted to teach you guys. <laughs> so this is like really cold chocolate. So I'm gonna work really fast here and just squeeze that together and set that over here while we start working on the structure. So I suppose you could literally just freeze the two pieces uh, like separately and pop them out of the mold and then do this if you mm -hmm. wanted to. This is already set. Ooh, it's like crackling. I know. <laughs> it's like Rice Krispies. So that's literally how you uh, put together the skull mold, which I think most people understand and is not the issue. Um, they get to this point and they're like, now what? Yeah. <laughs> like how do I mount this for my structure and there's a couple of different ways you can do it if you are using threaded rod you can drill a hole and um, just like put this right onto the threaded rod just like this but I tend to use PVC pipe for um, using my bus cakes because it allows me to have more freedom as far as um, the, the size of the, the structure and stuff so whether I'm doing like a full figure like the Princess Mononoke or if I'm just doing like a small bus cake like this, uh, I can work on the face ahead of time and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So the first thing I'm going to do is drill a hole into the chocolate. What? I know. Isn't that bizarre that you can drill chocolate? <laughs> so I'm using one of these drill bits. I don't know what this is called. <laughs> it's like a little flat paddle for drilling holes. And... Um, it says one inch on it, but it's actually half an inch, if that makes sense, which confused mm. me a lot. I think it's supposed, it's like, maybe it's one inch, I don't know. I don't understand why it says one inch. Because it, well, it should make a one inch hole. I know, but this is a half inch PVC pipe. Is it? Yeah, so it doesn't make sense to me, but mm. I don't know. Whatever. Just use the one inch uh, drill bit, and that will make a hole that's big enough for the half inch PVC pipe. So, um, just in case you need to know anything about a screw gun, left side loosens the hole on the end. You hold right here. That makes the hole bigger. Put that in. I'm holding this little loosening part with my finger, clicking the right side, and just letting that tighten. Do you not know how to use a drill? Girl, I did that manually. Oh, oh you work, did? Yes, I'm oh. working on my biceps. Don't judge me. Okay. <laughs> I'm not judging. So, um, on the skull itself, we're going to drill a hole uh, in the back half of this skull here. Because if you drill in the front, what usually happens is you run into it when you're sculpting. So, mm -hmm. you're, you're like sculpting the neck and then all of a sudden you hit pipe. So, put it back a little bit uh, further in the back portion of the skull. And depending on what angle you drill at will be the angle that the pipe is inserted at. So, oh my god, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Apparently, I've overfrozen this thing. It like doesn't want to stick together. <laughs> Apparently, it's called a flapper bit, and it is used for drilling holes in wood. A flapper bit, huh? Yeah, that's, that's cool. yeah. Yeah, I don't know why it's not sticking like this. I have a feeling it's because it's just been frozen for a really yeah. long time. Because it's never done this before. I've been meaning to demo this for like a week. Oh, and it's been in the freezer that yeah. long. Ugh. Yeah. All right, so let, let's try and drill this without like <laughs> losing, losing the back portion of the head. Oh, so what I was saying on my Indian girl um, 
cake. I think she's over there. Her head is tilted to the side like this. So mm -hmm. I drilled the um, the hole at an angle. Like so, I put the I held the head at an angle like this, and then drilled straight up. So the PVC pipe goes into the skull at an angle. Well, it goes into the skull straight up, but the head is tilted so that you can make the head, you know, at any angle or whatever. So we're gonna, just gonna go straight up though. So I'm just gonna push into the to the back of the skull and just do some minor surgery. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so we don't need to go in very far. So we have like a little cavity. All right, so PVC cutters. These are my buddies here. PVC cutters, they cost 10 bucks from the hardware store. And I use these to cut the PVC because A, I'm afraid of saws and I don't use them unless I absolutely have to. So um, I just would use these to cut however long, this, this length doesn't matter right now. Because we're making this to go onto an external mount. So this is like a head sculpting platform that I made. Um, it's just two pieces of wood with a lazy Susan in the middle mm. so that I can mount my chocolate skull to this and work on it for weeks before I actually do the cake because that takes a really long time and you can just work on it whenever you want and then add it to the cake later so that you don't have like cake sitting out for hours and hours, right? So I'm gonna just take some of my melted chocolate, put that into the hole, and then it's just gonna bust out because that's my luck. <laughs> also make sure you wash your PVC. You buy this from the hardware store and it's like in a hardware store, so I'm sure they don't wash it or care if it's dusty. <laughs> <laughs> then you just put that in there. I'm gonna put some more chocolate. Fill it up. Doesn't have to be pretty, we're gonna be covering everything, so. that'll just take a couple of minutes to set. Since it's frozen. <laughs> Since the chocolate is frozen. While we're, do while we're waiting on that, let's start building our structure. That's easy, right? Mm-hmm. So, for the cake board. This board is from Cake Boards Avere. As far as I know, you cannot order just a cake board straight from them, from their website. They only deal bulk to other websites. So I'm pretty sure Global Sugar Art sells these or you can find them on Amazon. Or you could just like put feet on your boards, you know, yourself. This is just like a time saver thing. And I use feet on all my boards. So, wow, look at that. Already got feet <laughs> on them. It's also coated in this like food safe material so you don't even have to cover your cake board. But I do anyways. <laughs> so you just take that off. This is 10 inches. I'm going to use a half inch metal flange. You can get these at the hardware store, but it's cheaper to get them from Amazon in packs of 10. And then uh, the board itself is like, um, probably like three eighths inch thick. And I use, not these screws. These will be okay. As long as the, the head of the screw is smaller, or not smaller than the hole, then it should be okay. I like these ones that have like the bigger heads on them. Like this. So this is like a 5 eighths inch or half an inch. And my drill bit. You always want to use a wooden cake board when you're doing structure because the, everything is going to be attached to this board. So especially if you have something that's like standing on one foot and it's super gravity defined, if you do that onto a cake drum, it's just going to fall apart. Just pre-drilling a small little hole through that really tough outer exterior. It's hard for a screw to go through that. I can't believe you used to do this manually. I know! I'm still mind blown about this. I was just going to say something. I was like, I'm still so impressed right now. And it's a shame because, like, half my family are contractors. Yeah, so. that's pretty sad. 
I converted a garage into a studio and I don't know this. That's what crazy. Is wrong with me? I don't even know how I learned. Who knows? There we go. Nice and easy. Where did you say you get the boards at? These are um, from Cake Boards Avare, A-V-A-R-E, but you can look for them on Amazon or Global Sugar Art. And we're gonna be carrying them soon too. Perfect. As soon as we figure out how to store them, right Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> Space is a problem. But it's such a time saver. I love them. Yes. All right. Rock solid. Yes. So you see that goes a little bit through the board and that's actually what I want. I want to be able to be gripping as much of that wood as possible, but obviously if there was no feet, that would be very damaging <laughs> to the other side of your table. Mm -hmm. So just be aware if you don't have feet, but I would recommend you put feet on your boards. Always. So this is dry, I'm sure. I have just a um, one of my metal flanges mounted to the board, a male adapter, half inch PVC pipe. This is called a, um, what is this called? A uh, coupler. It just is to attach two pieces of um, PVC pipe in a straight line. So I can put this here like this and then oh, I'm working on the face, I'm working on the face. A week goes by and then I can take this off and move it to my cake. Oh, so weeks. Yeah. So over here, out of the way. So male adapter. What size of flange again? Half inch, everything's half inch. Half inch flange, half inch male adapter, half inch PVC. Get that on there. And then PVC pipe. And I'm gonna use my gal over here as sort of my reference because otherwise it takes a long time to do all the measuring. If you are a member of sugargeekshow.com, I have this bust cake tutorial in all of its seven hours of in-depth learning <laughs> glory. <laughs> and one of the things that you get is this template right here. So this is going to help me know how, how long to cut things, right? So you might be like, oh, I'm just going to cut this like super tall or whatever. <laughs> and then you put it in here and you're like, oh wow, that's way too tall, right? So I'm using this just to, as a guide of about how tall to cut. And I'm gonna bring this up to about here because I'm not putting in this cross section. We're going straight cake. Say so what? I don't know. This is how I did the Spider-Man cake tutorial. Nice. So you're definitely not gonna get as much flawless detail doing it this way as you would in this tutorial where it's like the body is cake and the arms are uh, like modeling chocolate and the upper body is rice cereal treats. It's less cake and it's just like more realistic. You can do more undercuts and get a lot of the anatomy better. But this is like a good basic thing. Like if you were just never sculpted a bus cake before and you're like, I want to sculpt Harley Quinn for my daughter who loves her, like this is how you would do it, okay? <laughs> All right, so we have our basic structure here. Very fancy. And we're going to cover this in aluminum foil tape. And where can you get that? Home Depot. Boop, boop, boop. The best cake store on the planet. <laughs> so aluminum foil tape is literally just aluminum foil that has a, a non-toxic adhesive on the back as long as you do not heat this up. So don't be putting this in the oven or nothing and melting it and then telling me that it's toxic because I told you not to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just like a glue. And they use this for like your dryer. Uh, the, the pipe that comes from your driver, dryer and vents out to the outside. This is like the tape they use to tape that so that it doesn't fall off your dryer, <laughs> basically. Or on your like air conditioning or anything like that. So I just, even though the, the, the flange is metal, I don't know what kind of metal it is, you know? I don't know what it's coated in. So even though it's washed, I just don't want to leach anything into my cake, ever. This roll costs about $5. Nice. And it's like 5 billion feet long. <laughs> so uh, that's the great thing about using materials that are not cake decorating materials is they're really cheap. And it's sharp, so be careful. Don't get too it, crazy. It is. I have many a cut on my finger, like little tiny paper cuts. So just, it doesn't hurt or anything. I think that's the weird thing. You just yeah. suddenly realize you have all these cuts all over your hands and you're just like, what? happened to my hands. 
Don't go all the way up because we got to make room for our coupler. I made that mistake before. Okay. Everybody with me so far? So far, so, so far, good. So good, good. All right, I'm going to go grab my cake. Anybody have any questions so far? Dan jumped on board, so he's helping out with questions, oh, too. Good. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. All right, I'm going to put on my gloves here. So beautiful. Yes. All right. Buttercream down first. Or you can use ganache. I'm using buttercream on in, in between the layers because it looks better when you slice it. Mm. But really, ganache is the most stable for everything. So I measured this to calculate my, um, my cake, right? So I have my life-size template right here. And then I just, like calculated how much cake I was going to need for that. So I'm thinking that there's going to be about a quarter inch to half inch of buttercream between each layer. So I want to make sure that it's wide enough and mm -hmm. I want to make sure that it's tall enough. But um, up here about right about the top of the bust, I don't need it to be quite so um, deep like um, because the chest is not like super thick as mm -hmm. opposed to how thick it is from here to here as is, is here to here. Does that make sense? Yes. So I didn't bake three sheet cakes because otherwise that just would have been a lot of wasted cake, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start stacking these. As far as the buttercream question goes, we use Swiss meringue. Yes. I always think that it's not going to be enough and then I make them too big. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do that. This is a new chocolate cake recipe that we're going to have up on the website very soon. But basically it is a chocolate butter cake, which means that when you put it in the refrigerator, it gets very firm. And it's also made with AP flour, which is not what I usually use for my cakes, but a lot of people complain to me that my chocolate cake recipe is too delicate for them. And a lot of that just really comes, to, I'm just used to it, you know? Like I'm used to handling a really delicate cake, so it's, it's not difficult for me. But if you are just starting out, you might want to start with a more robust uh, cake recipe. And um, this one works really good. And it tastes good, as we can all attest to. Except for Michelle, who's in keto. Yes. <laughs> I'm on keto too, but I gotta taste my cakes. Yes. And if you want to make a, a male cake, it's the exact, exact same process. And um, that's the Spider-Man cake. Except for the head is cake too, because back then I didn't have a chocolate skull. I just don't think it's necessary to make the head out of cake. Like, yeah. I could if I wanted to. I have many times, but it's just a waste. Like, this is going to be, what, like, a quarter cheat? That's like 50 servings, right? Yeah. So that's like 50 servings or maybe 35 party servings. Are you really going to have a party with more than 35 people at it? If you are, you're extra. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I, just hear, I hear the people say it. <laughs> the young people. Those young the kids today. <laughs> That looks so good. I Isn't love that. that. Yeah, it's a great chocolate cake recipe. Look how it's very sturdy. Yeah. Let's push that down. It's heavy too. Which is great. So Michelle, I always forget like how heavy cake is. Because to be honest, I don't eat a lot of cake. And I usually make my sculpted cake tutorials out of rice cereal treats so that I can keep them. But our garage is overflowing <laughs> with, <laughs> with cakes and stuff. So I have to just be a little bit more picky about which ones I save. Like this gal has actual cake inside. So I'm like afraid to cut into it. Uh, I'm a little terrified. I should um, just throw it away and not cut it open. Yes. Because I don't want to know what's in there. <laughs> But um, Avalon is getting older. She's three and a half now. And she's like, hello, can I have that cake, please? Yeah. So we've started doing more things out of cake. So my poor child, who has to look at me making cake all day, can actually eat it. <laughs> Gosh, that's such good cake. It is. So I'm going to use this as a template. Normally, you would um, cover this in, like, tape so that your hands don't get it all gunky. But that would be extra. No. Right. That would be 
extra work. All right, so about, I'm gonna say this much. There's my bowl. Dude, don't be throwing away them scraps. No. This is donated to the family. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we use extra dark cocoa powder for mm -hmm. the chocolate. It gives it a nice, good chocolate flavor. Mm -hmm. Somebody was saying it looks pretty dark. It is. Let's see. I'm gonna, see I don't really know. I have a side uh, template, too, that I didn't print out. So I'm going to say she's about five inches thick. That's the nice thing about templates. Well, hello, Dan. Oh, hey. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you are so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to take a keto-sized piece, which is, should be nothing, but um, I, I just can't help myself. <laughs> you are so funny. Uh, that was hilarious. I was like, oh my gosh, did something go wrong with the live? And he has a plate and fork in his head. <laughs> I'm like, I know what you want. All right, so I'm basically getting the rough width on both sides, right? So I'm cutting the upper body at like an angle to account for breasts. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> and I'm just gonna cut down. So we are gonna have a very slight undercut right for boobage you just have to be really careful about that because if you make them too big they're just gonna fall off <laughs> and that's not good oh my gosh um all right gonna... i can smell the cake from here by the way sorry oh my gosh where's my ketones yeah, i almost feel like i need to come on that side can you film over my shoulder yes ma'am all right so i need to calculate width of arms here about here and here. Come down. Right. So these are arms. You ever read, like, um, see one of those drawing books that has people built and they're all like a bunch of squares and cubes? Yeah. It's like that. Oh, and then you just soft soften. Soften, exactly. Edges. That yeah. makes sense. Oh, I see what you're doing. It's all coming together now. Yeah. This one, I'm just rounding out. I'm not going straight back. I think some people forget, too, that your body is, like, rounded. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, your body is this rounded part. Your your whole chest cavity is, a, um, is an egg shape, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people make the back really um, flat. Mm. And your back is not flat. It's round. Okay. And then, uh, let's see. Boobs. Let's say about right here. Because that's convenient. Mm. Just, just cutting in a little bit. And then I'm going to round out corners. And then um, I think I'm gonna round out the arms a little bit. By round out, I'm literally just cutting the corners off. Pretty simple. Uh, me, like I feel like people think they have to like do all this cutting to round something out, but really that work is done with the buttercream and the ganache. So that's all I had to do. Nice. Not that much. And then I'm just going to the way that your uh, your boobs look. It's going to sound kind of strange, but I think people think that a breast is like a teardrop shape like this going straight up mm -hmm. or they think it's a circle, right? Mm -hmm. Both of these things are not right. If you um, think of a boob as more of like a teardrop shape kind of going towards your armpit, that's what the muscle oh. is doing, right? So if I cut two little teardrop shapes like that, that, that touch in the middle... I'm going to have to start going, moving to a smaller knife here in a second. And then I'm just going to scoop that at more of a gentle angle. 
Does that make sense? For sure. I'm just kind of scooping out all of this extra. Rounding out the boobies. You see how fast that happens? Things go very quickly in cake carving if you know what you're going for. The thing that takes a long time in cake carving is trying to figure it out. Figure out the measurements, what the, uh, is it proportionate? Is it not proportionate? Why does it look weird? You know, that's the stuff that takes a long time. So I'm just smoothing that chest part up more. So it's going up into the neck. Rounding this out more. It's going out that way. And this part is not done yet. We're gonna use some of our cake scraps to do some, some additional work once we get our skull on here. Anybody have any questions? Nope. They're just Amazed, stunned like into me. silence. <laughs> I caught myself looking at the cake and said, the <laughs> so like, they're like, hello, I can't see. <laughs> Pretty much. I was like, oh, yeah, just kidding. Sorry. Right here. <laughs> Sorry. We're here. I'm here. I uh, wonder we could get an extra dark cocoa. Is it all American thing? I think you buy it online, couldn't you? Yeah. Where did it? Was the cocoa powder bucket? It's just a Dutch cocoa um, that, that's extra dark. You don't have to use extra dark cocoa powder. But that's what we like. That's what I had. I hear Dan moving. Mm -hmm. Must have heard me. All right, I know that kind of looks like nothing right now, so let's let's clean it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna have to grab another bowl too. I'll just use this cake pan. We're gonna make a little bit of cake clay. Is this it? Perfect. It is. Guitard uh, Chocolate Noir. And this is it, right? The 100% mm -hmm. Dutch cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. It has a really strong cocoa flavor. Yeah. Because of the Dutch, the Dutchness. <laughs> the Dutchness. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just adding a little bit of ganache to our cake scraps, and that's just going to help it set up in the refrigerator nice and firm. I'm gonna squish my hands. So this is this is I don't actually I don't know how other people make it, but this is how I make cake pop dough as well. A little bit of cake scraps with buttercream and a tiny bit of chocolate. And then you just squish it until it becomes like a truffle kind of texture. I don't squish mine to the point that it's like every lump and bump is out, because I just think that's weird. Like that's a weird texture. So I just kind of get mine to looks like like that. Still slightly marbled. You remember doing this? Oh. <laughs> it's like I'm getting flashbacks. Yep, and my mouth is like super watery right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put our skull on. I'm just gonna take off my gloves. This is why it's great to work with gloves when you're doing stuff like this because you have instantly clean hands. I have my template here, and I have a feeling that once I add my my flange right here, that that's basically going to be as tall as her head needs to be. So, yeah, it's even just a little bit taller. Oops. So I'm gonna cut this off almost all the way to the very bottom. So imagine if we actually finished this whole cake, like sculpted the body, covered it in ganache, covered it in buttercream, and everything was totally finished, and then just pop the head on, the finished head on. Mm. Or you could finish the head, like if it was super elaborate, and the body is going to be really simple, like Spider-Man, his body is like literally red fonded, you know? Yeah. So you can work on the head, make it look really good, then sculpt the cake and, um, you know, get that all done in one day and then pop the head on. Um, normally I would cover this part in with more aluminum foil too, but, um, well, I guess I was afraid it was going to stick to my fingers, but it's okay. Go. 
So now you can take your cake pop dough, the cake clay, and build up the neck and trap part, this part of the neck. It's fairly thin. Can I just say I'm pretty impressed on how fast this is going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. It's like you're a professional or something. It helps a lot <laughs> understanding anatomy, to be honest. You know, like I know exactly what I'm going for. Mm -hmm. um, I do have to check my own measurements sometimes because I'm doing it quickly. I'm doing it live. You know, things can get kind of messed up visually. But yeah, overall, I feel pretty good about it. I'm going to just smooth this area. Well, I wish I had some chocolate perky little babies like that. Yeah, so they're a little bit low right here, so we're going to build that up. Gotcha. A so they're a little bit more proportionate. And that's nice to use the cake clay for, too, as well. To, like, I mean, her boobs are pretty big, though. <laughs> that always happens. I always give my cakes boobs that I wish I had. <laughs> right. The school we use are our very own chocolate school molds, mm -hmm. which is on sale at the Sugar Geek Show or uh, Shop dot com. <laughs> what was that, Michelle? Bleep bleep bleep. SugarGeekShop dot com. There we go. So then, um, the whole the whole thing about the skull and why you should use it is, I now have this underlying structure ready to put modeling chocolate over and I don't have to to understand the scale. It's already in proportion to my cake. I know where the eyes go, I know where the lips go, I know how big the head is gonna be, and it just saves you time. Cause, it, Cause one of the thing that bothers me is when I post cakes like this, the, the, Egyptian, skull, the Egyptian goddess, people are like, oh that's so pretty and it's a work of art, but I could never, like nobody would ever pay for that. I just made this whole thing right in front of you. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't take any more time to do than a wedding cake would. And you just have, uh, you know, tools to help you make things go faster, just like anything else, just like anything else you would have. So, you know, you might use a mold to make flowers, uh, like a flower texture, or you might, um, you know, I don't, I'm just trying to think of like shortcuts you take with cakes you wouldn't you know necessarily hand paint a, a, a pattern onto a birthday cake you print it out on an edible image and wrap it right mm -hmm. so you don't need to sculpt the head and the skull from scratch like you can use something to make it go faster especially if you don't quite understand anatomy yet which most people don't okay. I could spend forever on the boobs because I obsess <laughs> See, the neck is a little bit skinny. You can also build the neck up with modeling chocolate if you want, which I usually do. But, it's, I mean... It's not. Why do you usually do the modeling chocolate? Um, It's just a little bit easier after the fact. Like, the neck has tendons and stuff in it, so if you just fill the whole neck with modeling chocolate, then once you're smoothing the final layer on, you're not pushing against cake. That makes sense. Does that? Yeah, so... Good to know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people make the, the neck too skinny. Mm. It's just very slightly narrower than your um, skull. Unless you're a football player. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's very easy to forget the bottom of the neck. That oh. slopes up into the chin. If you're a dude, yeah. this is called Adam's apple. If you're a girl, it's just our neck fat. <laughs> <laughs> Our second chin. Second chin. There. So, um, I'm just going to finish. I'm going to make a little bit more cake pop dough and finish the arms here. Move this stuff out of the way. And yes, this is what my countertop will look like by mm. the end of this. In fact, it usually looks worse. <laughs> As Michelle can attest to. Girl, Just what happened it. in this kitchen? <laughs> Dumb blue up. Art. Art happened. Just gonna round out that shoulder a little bit there. 
And then I remember one of the biggest things that you taught me was get eye level with your cake mm -hmm. so you could see it. Yeah, come down and look like for symmetry to make sure that everything looks right. Because you can you just like get too close to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Looks pretty good. <laughs> There's where Evelyn gets it. It just reminded me of Did her. she say pretty good? Yeah. Oh, that's when funny. When I was watching that um, video of the orange juice. Uh-huh. Oh, she did. She yeah, she's like, pretty oh, good. pretty good. I'm just kind of pushing in right here. And I'm not really making the, the uh, collarbone yet, but there is quite this hollow right here. And I think a lot of people accidentally make this portion of the woman... Um, too thick and that makes her look really bulky and strong mm. right because if you were a dude and you were just jacked this muscle gets really big and thick and there really isn't a gap right there but on a female you know usually their uh, muscles are not quite that strong I love all the little details mm-hmm and then just make sure that the from here to here this is a curve this is a, a curved surface. It's not, it's, it's going into the armpits. I'm getting, I'm like giving you so much more information than you need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I believe you can do it. That's why. Exactly. All right. I'm going to call that good. That looks great. So then what I would do now is um, just cover this whole thing in some ganache as a crumb coat and it also helps to keep it pretty uh, stable so I'm just going to cut into the back of the arm a little bit so that it's not quite so one-dimensional with the body does that make sense mm -hmm. thank you Michelle for confirming for everybody mm -hmm. I'm your voice you are Sorry, right, keep moving. Rotating. So if you look on the back, the difference between this side and this side, as far as how much dimension that has, just by cutting in a little bit. This is a totally natural angle. Absolutely. <laughs> Same thing to the front. I'll come around. Just gonna cut in. So you're cutting out this triangle. And this is why you need a chilled cake and a dense cake, right? Mm-hmm. All right. We're gonna coat this in some ganache. Ganache. Ah! And I'm just gonna do just a thin coat to just kind of seal everything in. Um, depending on how warm it is, it's fairly warm in here. Surprisingly, with me and Michelle in here all hyped up on ketones. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, a little warm. <laughs> but um, you could chill the cake first before you do this. But I'm just doing it. One thing that I just noticed, you see how the back of the neck goes straight down right here and then they have a little bit of a hump? Mm -hmm. That's not right. Unless you're me. <laughs> <laughs> the back, the, the, your neck is actually at uh, an angle. It doesn't go straight up and down. So the angle of the, the front of the neck, you see how it's kind of sloping up into the bottom of the chin? Mm -hmm. so the back of the neck should mimic that. Mm. So you're, you're, if your neck was straight up and down, you'd have to push your head way far back and like lift your chin, but your neck is actually naturally a little bit forward like this. Oh, That's yeah. It. So that way it's connecting into your spine and you no longer have a hump. There you go, lady. Do you want to tw um, twist it a little bit so you can see the other way? This way? There you go. Yeah. You see it? Thank you. Cool. 
cover these arms and then show you what I use to smooth and then we'll be done. Say what? Yeah, so if you have any other questions at all, now is the time to ask them. Otherwise, please check out sugargeekshow.com for more in-depth sculpted cake tutorials. You can order the skull, um, armature wire, and hopefully soon cake boards off of sugargeekshop.com. And Michelle will mail them to you. Absolutely. Because she's a badass. With my little seal kiss of approval. <laughs> One thing to note about ganache, when you first make ganache, it is liquid, right? And then after a few hours, it turns to what you call peanut butter consistency, which is great for smoothing onto your cake. And then after a few more hours, or in the fridge, it turns into something called solid chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your ganache. It's really just the temperature of the actual chocolate, right? So if you need it to be softer, nuke it for 15 seconds. If you need it to be firmer, toss it in the fridge for a little bit, and then stir it until it's the consistency that you want it to be. This is um, two to one yes. ratio of dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. I'm using Innovative Sugar Works. Uh, um, what is this called? It's, uh, it's like a smoother, but I don't remember. What, uh, acetate smoother. And I like this for using on curved surfaces because you can basically follow the surface and smooth it out. And that way when you go to put your... Um, fondant or chocolate or whatever you're going to put over the top you don't have any lumps is this just a crumb coat or is this the final coat this is just the crumb coat so then you'll go over again yeah with ganache with uh, another layer of ganache that's really thin but we're not going to show that part ganache is like so i remember like not understanding ganache for the longest time and then once once i got that it was like structured cakes just are so much easier with ganache this definitely needs to be chilled. And how long do you wait for the second coat? Oh, maybe 20 minutes. In the refrigerator? Yep, 20 minutes in the fridge and then put the second coat on. And then I would use a paper towel, a damp paper towel, and just clean up the board and finish her. That's basically it. Boom. Yeah. Any final words, Liz, that you would like to say? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I'm going to upload this tutorial uh, to my YouTube channel, Sugar Geek Show, or YouTube.com slash Sugar Geek Show if you need to rewatch it. It's also going to be up on our website as a free tutorial as well. And um, yeah, thanks you guys for watching on a Friday, which I know is a lot of cake decorators busy days. So I appreciate there being so many people in here and commenting and showing support. And I just really hope that you like using the chocolate skull. It's definitely close to my heart. I think that it helps a lot of people bridge that gap between I want to make a sculpted cake but I don't understand anatomy or anything right so yeah. if you do use it let me know I'd love to share pictures and other than that we got two more questions sure. one question we have is how do you attach the fondant to the um, chocolate skull mold um I you first of all I use modeling chocolate to sculpt over a skull and the reason for that is because then you can smooth the edges and if you're interested in just like a straight up face sculpting tutorial that we have just the face sculpting tutorial on sugargeekshow.com where I break down how you put the lips on, the cheeks, the nose, the eyes, eyelids, all that and in a certain process so that you get a realistic looking face over the top of the skull. And then if you want to learn more about the whole body as a whole, um, you can watch the Egyptian goddess tutorial which covers the face plus the body. And um, I really prefer using modeling chocolate over everything. It does make it more difficult to sculpt, or I mean to color, because um, chocolate is oil-based and most water co or food coloring is water-based. So if you wanna make it easy on yourself, sculpt the body out of cake, put your details on the face out of modeling chocolate, and then like panel the front of her with a thin piece of fondant so that you can color and dust and do all that kind of stuff. It just has to be super thin and then you're gonna have like probably a seam on the shoulders. So just be aware of that, cover it with hair, cover it with clothing, you know. But uh, if you use modeling chocolate, that's pretty much the only way that you're gonna get a seamless finish. And you don't need to have any adhesive from the modeling chocolate to the chocolate, it'll nope. just go right on. Nope, chocolate sticks to chocolate, so it'll go straight on. 
Um, one thing I would mention is that ganache, when it comes out of the fridge, it can be pretty dry. So you might want to mist the ganache with a little bit of water when you start paneling it with fondant or um, modeling chocolate to get it to stick. Perfect. And where can we get the ganache recipe that we use here today? Um, all of my recipes, including the cake, is on uh, sugargeekshow.com and all of the recipes are free. <laughs> the buttercream <Ooh>. too. <laughs> Alrighty, I think that's it for all of our questions. Great, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.